reclaimed control of key infrastructure. The illegal annexation of Tanoa months ago. So there we were, trying to fit an old truck packed with Russian weapons down a goat track in the middle of the jungle. I should probably explain how we got here. I decided we would go back to Tavu and take both our revenge and whatever weapons we could get our hands on. Ready to fire. Open fire. We made quick work of a two-man patrol as we came off the beach. We then began to clear the town from the southern end. We pushed until we reached the northwestern corner of the town when I heard a Russian patrol coming. With three of my squad now KIA, I knew it was time to get my guys and the weapons back to the boat. We took the long ride back to our island hideout and sorted through the weapons we had acquired. We were making progress, however, it was obvious that if we were to mount any kind of serious assault on the enemy, we would need to move. I formulated a plan to move in the cover of darkness and insert our HQ deep inside Russian-held territory. It would be a risk, but if we were able to push back the enemy, it would give us a foothold on the southwestern islands. Waiting. Standing by. Unfortunately, on our first patrol of the area, I lost a steering competition with a Russian BTR, and then awoke from my dirt nap with a Russian patrol 20 meters from HQ. We had survived this time, but it was clear we needed to fall back and regroup. We made our hasty retreat to a nearby uninhabited island and wondered where to go from here. I must have spent hours staring at that damn map. And then it hit me. At the southernmost point of the main island was a chain of poorly defended resources. The plan would be to sneak in and set up in this valley and then clear the resources one by one before moving to take the outpost to the north and eventually the airfield to the west. Red team right there. Copy that. Two squads ahead to check for enemy roadblocks as we returned to HQ with the load of weapons we acquired from liberating the sawmill. It turned out to be a wise decision. With our 
AT capabilities exhausted, our only option was to return to base using the jungle tracks that weaved through the region's mountains. So now, you know why we were trying to fit an old truck packed with Russian weapons down a goat track in the jungle. But the thing is, this is only the beginning of the story. With three out of the five resources now liberated, we were now starting to gain a foothold on the region. The thought of taking our first outpost was enticing, and I perhaps foolishly decided we would skip the banana plantation and go ahead with the assault on the outpost, making do with what weapons and equipment we already had at our disposal. On me. Copy. Formation staggered column. The next morning, at 0500, we would step off with three additional infantry squads and a sniper team to assault the plantation from the southern end. Oh shit. The squad that was flanking right took first contact. Now they knew we were coming. Rifleman, half a kick, bearing 060. Holy shit. The fog of war, mixed with my poor decisions, were about to have disastrous consequences. Where did that even land? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I had been slow to make the call to push. We had already lost two men, and we were about to start taking contact from multiple directions. Holy moly, that was intense. Such chaos, followed by such calm. The birds, the insects. But it wasn't over yet.
We now had four KIA and one casualty, and I had been hit. I almost decided to retreat. A smart man probably would have. Yes, thank you man, start healing the guy, Jesus. I decided to take two guys and make a hard push while the medic stayed with the casualty until he was up. We're back in business, boys. That medic, that medic is the man. Luckily for me, the medic had caught back up with the squad. On me. Understood. I think I we're bitten off more than we can chew. Stand up. We were now borderline combat ineffective. Our other squads had been all but wiped out. It was time to admit defeat. <laughs> 